Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. I would like to give a quick thanks to our tier 5 channel members and patrons. Fallen Angel Buzz Killington Thank you, again. Now on to the story. Story number one. Modded to the Breaks. Written by Hexchem. Admiral Gardell pressed his hands to his head, silently, pleading with the incoming headache to spare him. Okay. Tell me again, please. Exactly how did we lose control of a completely unmanned capital ship in Drydock? The Dark Master before him fidgeted slightly as they gathered his courage. Several subordinates stood behind him passively, waiting for the inevitable round of layoffs that would surely follow such a loss. Well, Admiral, sir, began the Dark Master Cleats. The, the new systems technician from Terra said that he was doing some stress testing on the computer calls to make sure that they'd hold up. And I guess some human stress tests interacted in an unexpected way with the base code of the ship's operating system. And, um... Gardell stared, unblinking, letting the silence become oppressive as he waited for the Dark Master to continue. The, the ship obtained the sentience, Admiral. It, it engaged its own autopilot functionality and left Drydock. And, uh, our last tracking suggests it's on a direct course towards the Imperial homeworld. Gardell tapped the datapad rapidly, putting up a map of the ongoing conflict between the Imperium and the National Organization of Righteous Dominion Sovereignties, the edge of the regions of the galaxy, which had long been under sovereignty control, were now being assaulted by the Imperium. These had sparked an escalation of hostilities across the galaxy with Imperial worlds and sovereignty worlds clashing at every turn. Admiral Gardell frowned at the blinking point moving towards the Imperial Hope world. Are these speed readings accurate? Yes, Admiral. It seems the ship without a living crew decided to divert life support power to engines, and because there are no concerns for acceleration forces on the crew, uh, the ship uh, didn't need to spend the usual amount of time getting up to speed. But this means the ship will reach the center of our enemy's entire control system inside the hour. At that speed, the defensive crits will barely become aware of the ship before it's within firing range of the capital. And you tell me that it was a human who did this. They're still new to the sovereignty. Did we miss something regarding their AI research or ship design theories? Another voice spoke up from the back of the group. They parted to reveal a thin, bespeckled human slouched behind the others. Admiral, I, I think I can explain. I was using the data core during some downtime to run an entertainment program, and this program has been modified by thousands of my fellows. We have an old maxim about it, mod it till it breaks, and uh, I guess the data core on the ship must have had enough power to actually handle, well, um, every mod and the mods started interacting together, and they got mixed up with some military objective data, and it gained self-awareness, but it's still acting on the context of the game. The human trailed off. Gardell stopped trying to suppress his headache and allowed it to simply wash over him. A game. You humans wrote a game that took over the capital class ship and immediately launched it at the enemy homeworld. Um... That wasn't the intent, I swear, but I can definitely tell you that's what happened. And how can you be sure it was this game? Well, sir, the ship sent a message to dock controls before it left. Admiral Gardell glanced down at the pad and tapped the new message icon. Skyron belongs to the Nords! End of story. Story number two. Define human. Written by Eddie Eddie. The greeting was a strange one. Every other welcoming in FTL community was simple. A few delegates from a new species was to meet the council and introduce themselves. 
Normally, it was a diplomat or two and a military representative. This shifted slightly, depending on the species. Hive minds would send a single member, while militaristic factions would send a few generals. Humans, however, had a delegation dozen strong. Each member was a representative of their own faction. Each member was unlike any other that stood there. There were humans that were far too perfect. A small group who were almost exactly the same height, had perfect facial features and all walked with an unearthly grace. Another that climbed to be human was a machine, grey metal with orange glowing lights for eyes. The collection of humans continued, some that were clearly of the same lineage as the perfect creatures, but had other traits, bird ears and tails, digit-grade legs. Some had huge swaths of their flesh replaced with machinery. Others looked perfectly normal and had glowing purple eyes. A few stood a head and shoulders above the rest and were clad in immense battle armor. All claimed to be human, and all said that the others were also human. Their ships were also desperate and eclectic, each faction insisting on arriving in their own ships, meaning that the human delegation ships equaled the council's members' entire fleet. Heavy box-like ships made of beige ceramics and crimson steel, armed with heavy coil guns and missile arrays. These mighty ships arrived in columns of fire, blazing a path through space that announced their arrival in brutal glory. Sleek, silver darts armed with particle weapons and powered with gravetic drives that whispered through space, telling the story of technological mastery. Other ships joined the throng, all shapes and sizes, Mighty wedges of metallic composites, armed with dozens of turrets of energy weapons. The largest ships of all, however, were the strangers. Immense amalgams of living flesh, gliding along using titanic fins that glittered with magnetic resonance. How could one species have all of these approaches to a basic problem of space travel? The welcoming progressed far longer than most others as each faction presented something to the council to represent their own unique nature, as well as grand presentations of humanity's finest works. Some works clearly could not compare to the things the other races produced, but there were things that shocked even the council. A unique game called chess, a companion animals known as dogs, even some puzzle boxes that they produced captured the interest of the council. As each faction presented its own unique gifts, it became clearer that each faction was unique as they were their gifts. A mighty weapon in the form of a spear that could cast forth a blazing flame that could tell a friend from foe. A tiny engine that drew its power from trapped star. A swarm of nanite drones that could be programmed to turn dirt and detritus into any element required. The meetings grew ever further from the normal as the humans greeted one another, as if they were different species, talking about trade deals and border disputes as if they were separate peoples. The council asked if this was some joke, if perchance human was the name of the collation or federation. The council was told that, no, they were all human, some more or less than others, but they all had one origin planet, one peoples. They were all human. Well, some of the council didn't believe this, but they didn't act right away. The formal dinner was organized, and the humans all ate different foods. Some refused to eat the same meals as the others, calling it poison or rubbish, as if it disgusted them. They all seemed most intent on trying every other kind of food that they could get their hands on, even if they were warned it was probably unpalatable or toxic. They insisted on at least just a little. It can't be that bad. Luckily, there were no diplomatic incidents that evening. The humans left with promises of trade envoys and an alliance. Several of the council species did not believe the humans were one peoples, 
but rather were a federation of weaker groups trying to appear as one homogenous peoples. After all, how could one species develop a gravetic drive, buy ships, and still use basic nuclear propulsion and look so different? And have as strange and different tastes as well as such strange and alien looks to one another. Of these species, one was more warlike than the rest. And left with the intent to fracture this human alliance, the process was slow. They made alliances with some of the groups of humans, but not others. Put trade embargoes on some human factions, but not others. Eventually, the time came and they fabricated a causus belli and made to invade a small faction that was having a border dispute with another faction. The reaction was swift, universal, and terrified the council. Every trade agreement, every alliance, any promise of good faith was abandoned, and the invading fleet found itself facing down a force composed of every faction of these humans, even those currently in disputes with the faction being invaded. There was no request for surrender. No mercy given, nor asked for. The council members believed was wiped from the galactic stage, and a message was sent to the council. We are human. We are each our own human. But we are all human. We are all the same at heart. We are human. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.